Well, good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Carmada here at the Hurricane Outlook Session for July 11th, 2020, recorded around 3.07 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, taking a look here at the latest sea surface temperature anomalies last updated as of yesterday, July 10th, we continue to notice this area out here in the equatorial Pacific head towards a La Nina background. By the time we get into fall and winter of this year, again, this area right off of uh, South America here has been hit very hard with these easterly wind trades that have been blowing across the area over the last several months. And this has led to significant upwelling of cooler water out in this region. That upwelling of the cooler water tends to spread out and move across the equatorial Pacific. And we're seeing that all the way out into here, even in some of the Nino 3.4 uh, 3 and Nino 4 regions. The Nino 3.4 region is what we're really kind of focused on within this kind of box right here. That is our area where we look for either El Nino or La Nina. And when we have either one of those, we can, you know, kind of say one or the other extreme. Currently, we are actually sitting in a cool neutral background, which actually favors more of the Atlantic Basin to be more favorable. And speaking of the Atlantic Basin, notice these very warm anomalies out here, even into the southwestern Atlantic, the Gulf, the Caribbean. These areas are just riding off the charts. In some cases out here in the southwest Atlantic, very, very warm. And this area in the main development region is running about a half a degree to a degree Celsius above the long-term average now. There has been some cooling, and, and the reason for that is because the Saharan air and increased trade winds have been blowing across this area, the Saharan air that's kind of been pushing up out here in the Cabo Verde Islands and, you know, in the main development region that has uh, temporarily cooled and halted a lot of the uh, warming out here in the MDR. However, there is signs that this area is going to warm quite substantially within the next few weeks or so, and we'll touch on that here in just a little bit, so stick around for why I do believe this is going going to warm fairly significantly. Now, taking a look here at the upper ocean heat content, valid as of this morning. Again, we continue to notice this area down here in the Caribbean and the southwestern Atlantic basins near uh, Nassau and the Bahamas, extremely off the charts here with the upper ocean heat content. This is basically taking a look at uh, the uh, oceanic uh, water temperature depth. Basically, how deep down does your 80 degree isotherm actually go, or roughly about 79.8 degrees Fahrenheit? Roughly we round that up to about 80 degrees. So this area out here in the Caribbean is pretty much on the third to upper fourth of the scale. And what this is representing here is this is your deeper upper ocean heat content. And if a tropical system was to come along and take advantage of this, I mean, you can just imagine that this uh, environment now is very conducive for additional strengthening and maintenance of a very in strong and intense tropical cyclone. And, you know, this is quite a bit above 2017 in this part of the world out here. You know, we are just running in uncharted territory. Uh, we are actually a little bit probably, I do believe, above 2005 in some retrospects in this area. So... You know, it's really only a matter of time before something comes along in this part of the world and takes advantage of these very warm waters and the upper ocean heat content values that are exceptionally warm. And even out here in the main development region of the Atlantic Basin, everywhere where I'm highlighting basically, has a very significant amount of upper ocean heat content. You know, not in retrospect to what we're seeing out here, but, you know, you think about this south of the Cabo Verde Islands, this area is certainly now warm enough to support tropical cyclones. It has that upper ocean heat content all the way back to the coast of Africa. So, you know, these tropical waves, if they can get coming off at a little bit lower latitudes, because we do have some waves that are coming off here at about 20 degrees north, and you're not going to have tropical cyclones developing really up in, in this kind of part of the world from tropical waves. But if you can get, you know, storms that come off at about 10 degrees, you know, north to here and maybe about 15 degrees north between this you're really going to see that favorable environment really begin to help these tropical cyclones. And again, it's only a matter of time before the main development region really becomes quite active and it's already becoming active. And we'll take a look at that here in just a minute or so. And speaking of water temperatures out in the Caribbean and Southwestern Atlantic, this is the actual skin temperatures, the water temperatures at the very surface from the CDAS methodology from tropicaltibbets.com. Initial, initialized this morning at about 1 o'clock a.m. 
And again, this area right in through here is just boiling. This is a literal bath water. And again, 31 to 32 Celsius down here uh, roughly correlates to about 89 to 90 Fahrenheit with even some of the buoys uh, representing uh, out here in the you know southwestern Atlantic uh, near Nassau and the Bahamas reporting upwards of 93 to 94 Fahrenheit. So in isolated pockets, now you're not going to see it in here. This is a very smoothed out representation of the sea surface temperatures, but in a raw data sense, there is some 93 to 94 Fahrenheit waters out in this region. And again, this area is only going to actually increase in warmth uh, over the next several weeks or so before we might finally start to see some uh, relief coming for these waters. But, you know, even down there at the beaches, you know, we, we've had people at the beaches uh, people, you know, sending us in tweets and stuff saying that the beaches are extremely warm there in the waters. And th these water temperatures do have my attention for the mere fact that if something comes along to take advantage of that, again, these water temperatures combined with the ocean, the oceanic uh, uh, water content depth is very warm, a very deep water content depth. And even out here in, t in the entirety almost of the Gulf of Mexico now reaching 30 Celsius. So, you know, it's only really a matter of time. And in the southeastern Pacific, again, you know, 29 to 30 Celsius out here in the southeastern Pacific. Off the coast of the, Le the Lesser Antilles and Barbados, 28 to 29 Celsius. Southwestern Maine Development Region, 27 to 28 Celsius. So very warm out here. And you can also see the Gulf Stream very warm in this part of the world overall. And it really only is a matter of time before we get something to take uh, advantage of that. Now, on the wider shot here, what's going on in the actual tropics right now? This is the equatorial Pacific region. This is basically our equatorial regions out through here. And this is Tropical Storm Christina right here. It is, yes, still a very strong tropical storm, but it is expected to undergo a significant weakening over the next several days or so. You can really notice a lot of this drier air now being wrapped in. Uh, not really a lot in terms of favorable oceanic content and uh, water temperature out here, you know, running very cool so this is going to run into a basic brick wall here and not going to be able to strengthen this was expected to become a major hurricane only a few days ago uh, but then actually significantly did not make that and really underperformed here as a 70 mile per hour tropical storm it really became close to becoming a hurricane last night and the national hurricane center was debating whether or not to make this a hurricane but uh, based on everything else, a lot of it uh, stuck down to there was just not enough evidence, and this remained a 70 mile per hour tropical storm. Still a, a fairly decent uh, central dense overcast in through here. Um, you know, you can kind of see the S symbol. You can notice the the general turning, kind of the S symbol. But again, drier, more stable air combined with not enough uh, oceanic uh, water content depth and water temperatures overall at the, the surface are not going to be conducive for further strengthening, and this will end up. Not not going on to produce anything. We have another tropical wave out here that it's going to try to get going, but no threats to land. A real quick look here at Christina. Again, 65 miles per hour now, moving west at 14 miles per hour. No additional strengthening is uh, likely at this time in weakening. The weakening trend has begun. Expected to become a tropical storm here uh, by really tomorrow or by Monday afternoon or so. And one more system to watch out here with a 50% chance of the next uh, 48 hours and an 80% chance over the next five days. This too will be of no significant consequence to land. Again, if this develops into anything significant though, this could generate some swells for the Cabo San Lucas Resort areas out here and the Gulf of California. But overall, this will also be staying well south of any land masses. So no threats to land at all from this system. So we're, you know, we'll kind of keep tabs on it, but you know, the most it's going to do radiate outwards but again otherwise than that there's no land concerns expected for uh, this system as at all as well now a wider shot here at the Atlantic Basin uh, from the College to Page Cod Meteorology uh, Go 16 satellite viewer here. Again, you're noticing a couple things going on. This is our, our wave axis out here that's going to be uh, trying to develop into a, a tropical cyclone in the eastern Pacific. The remnants of uh, Tropical Storm Fay is actually way out here. You notice there is an, an interesting feature over Pennsylvania here and the northeast. This is actually not the remnants of Tropical Storm Fay. This is the uh, remnants 
remnants kind of of an older uh, meso uh, meso vortex low pressure system that developed over Lake Erie. Water temperatures out there are running about 86 or not 86, about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So it did actually produce a little bit of a surface meso vortex, kind of you know rare, but it does happen on occasion. And uh, this is going to produce some gusty wind, showers, and thunderstorms. Obviously, in this area, still pretty unstable in the air kind of behind Faye. There's another area of kind of low pressure out here, not not really doing much at all. Kind of just a, you know a broad area. Water temperature is way too cool out here for any surface uh, development of of any tropical uh, you know vortex processes there. You notice, however, what's kind of going on. We talked about this kind of yesterday, how, you know, this area of convection, uh, you know, was kind of trying to spin up uh, kind of near Fay and kind of rotate in and stuff like that. And we're still seeing that today, although we're not going to really see much, uh, you know, northwestern progression because it's not now rotating around an actual center. But this is left the leftover kind of remnant trough axis that's kind of positioned to the north of Fay. The remnants of Fay is kind of way out here off the top of the screen. And this is causing some showers and uh, disturbance in the showers and thunderstorms out here uh, in the Bahamas and southwestern Atlantic. But this is a, a very big trough axis. There is still some pretty strong upper level shear across here. And you can kind of see how this is getting really stretched out, not really bundling. So there is no concern at this time for any tropical development out here off the coast of uh, the United States. As this is just a kind of remnant trough axis, not really expected to do much at all. This is causing some showers and thunderstorms, though, in the Bahamas, Nassau, Grand Bahama, Marsh, uh, Marsh Harbor. Um, that is going to cause some showers and thunderstorms, maybe some gusty winds in that area. So just kind of be mindful of that. Uh, if you are in those areas, and obviously down here towards Miami and Key West, maybe some showers and thunderstorms. As a result of this, the rest of these thunderstorms are actually diurnal processes. But you actually do notice that we're getting a lot of this drier continental air that's kind of streaming in back behind this. So not really expecting to see over a, a whole lot of things uh, over the next several days or so. And taking a look here. At the Eastern Atlantic Basin, we have a very strong, potent tropical wave. You notice some of the westerly winds here kind of trying to turn up here. This is very indicative of a very strong tropical wave that is coming out of Africa in the intertropical convergence zone, which is roughly running about here, roughly running about 10 degrees north uh, latitude here. And again, that is a very significant, uh, you know, that, that's pretty good turning in the atmosphere. And that's a very strong tropical wave that is coming off of Africa right now. Again, you know, the water temperatures are, you know, fairly warm, you know, above the long term average. And, you know, again, it's a really only going to be a matter of time. And if we can pop out here, we'll, we'll take a real quick look here at the analysis from the uh, Eastern Atlantic Basin coming from the CDAS methodology. If we can get a look at that, we'll pop that on. I should have had this kind of going before, but the tropical Atlantic, there it is. So the tropical Atlantic basin here, you notice about 10 degrees north uh, latitude here. You know, running 28 Celsius out in this area, 27, 28 Celsius with some upper ocean heat content out in this area. Again, for reference, that is our 10 degrees north latitude line, which I'll let just a tad bit better. There we go. And you notice how, you know, there is some upper ocean heat content in there. So we will have to watch this. Uh, you do notice that there is still a lot of dry, stable air out in this region. And that's going to be persisting over the next few days. But that's gradually going to abate. We're going to see these tropical waves come off more vigorous and further north in latitude and eventually it's only a matter of time before something gets going here's the Cabo Verde Islands out here very strong potent tropical wave really trying to get it going out here and you know will this become invest 99l who knows you know if this can certainly get more energy bundled in the atmosphere and persisting showers and thunderstorms activity you know you never know so we will be watching that but no development expected at this time uh, for this little disturbance of, of weather but we will be watching it is very interesting and an overall symptom of the pattern change that's getting ready to undergo and speaking of the pattern change this is the European 850 millibar zonal wind anomalies for the next five days. This basically goes, uh, starts at today and valid through uh, July 16th. And what you're starting to see here is very strong westerly winds. And we've been talking about that. Now, these purples down here, these purples are very indicative of easterly winds that cool off the ocean, uh, the ocean surface. 
and the westerly winds are indicated in this orangish color right there. That causes a downwelling effect and stronger uh, warming in this area. And you're really seeing that this is val valid out to July the 16th. Again, this area is very strongly above uh, in, in the anomalies for these westerly winds and you notice we'll go out here to uh, to the ending of the forecast period out to July 18th and you were still persisting with these very strong westerly winds even continuing all the way into the Caribbean while you notice what's setting up out here we're getting a uh, increase in easterly trades out here that is going to be causing some uh, upwelling out in this region and cause an overall disturbance where we have a cooling off pattern so what this is setting up for is a cooling off in the subtropics warming up in the deep tropics and what does that signal that signals green lights a go for the deep tropics and we'll put that out here till the basically the end of july this goes throughout now july 21st and even throughout this time period you notice how this area is still uh running with these trade winds in the six to ten day forecast realm where you know we're starting to really see um you know these westerly winds persist they amplify while we start to get a reduction or in, I'm sorry, an increase in the trade winds out here. This might bring some temporary relief to cool off some of the sea surface temperatures in this area um, over the next uh, few weeks or so. That, that might be generally good. Uh, but the deep tropics is where we have the biggest problem. That continues to persist all the way into the Caribbean and portions of the Gulf of Mexico. So this very strong area of uh, westerly winds so much, in fact, that if we go to the 850 millibar vorticity uh, map here uh, from the European, from tropicaltidbits.com, you notice how if we kind of persist out here, we're actually getting westerly winds. These are westerly wind barbs that are blowing across this region so much for, you know, these at the 5,000 foot level. This is actually very indicative that these anomalies are going to be so strong that they're going to be uh, prompting the winds at surface, basically. The, this is still at 5,000 feet, but you can imagine at the surface to become actually um, just basically straight westernlies. And that would only help to amplify the cyclonic vorticity in the atmosphere. You know, and the, the European does try to, you know, have a little bit of energy kind of co-locate down here in the deep tropics, you know, within the next, uh, you know, six to 10 days or so. Then another strong tropical wave coming off from the Cabo Verde Islands out there. So you notice how the reduction in the trade winds, the big high pressure out here, you get anything to develop under here, it's not recurving out to sea. It's you know, it's just not. So with this pattern, this has me very intrigued. It's not time to panic. It's not time to stress. It's not time to worry. You will know when it is time to worry. But we don't want we don't want people worrying. We don't want people panicking. We want people to be informed. We want people to be you know on top of their A game so that when the real peak of the season is here, and it's coming up quite quick quickly. When it's here, you guys need to be ready that if something is heading your way, you need to know what your evacuation plan is going to be, uh, are your medications up to date, and uh, have enough to last you a full week. We learned a lot of lessons after Hurricane Dorian and Hurricane Michael. You need to have enough uh, food and water and medication to last you a week, enough, enough general uh, life-saving supplies to last you about a week or more. Uh, a NOAA weather radio, a portable radio, obviously portable chargers for your cell phones. Um, we're living in a day and age where obviously everybody should have a cell phone, um, but again, you know, these weather radios, you know, if you don't have one, they're like, you know, 20 bucks at a Walmart. If you live here in the United States, go pick one up. They're very, very cheap and inexpensive. And we need more people to have these weather radios. We need more people to be aware and understanding of what's really going on out here. Again, this is very life-saving information. And I hope you guys can really take this into account and put it into your own preparedness plans. That's the main reason why I'm here to, to give you guys kind of the heads up so you guys can go start preparing. And obviously, I want you to be here because without you guys, the support wouldn't be there and this wouldn't even be a thing. And we want to be able to achieve great things. So thank you guys for your support. And I hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael O'Malley. 
And I will be back with more for you then tomorrow afternoon. Stay safe, everyone, and have a great evening.